everybody, and thank you so much for joining me here at ArgoCon for my talk, GitOps, the magic key to cloud native security. My name is Anais Urlich. I'm the open source developer advocate at Acre Security. Now, just a quick disclaimer before I get started with the talk. Across this conference, you're going to hear several really amazing talks on how the different ways that people are using cloud native technologies in a very novel way. This talk is really to highlight the security benefits of GitOps that tools such as Argo CD can help you with. If you're already using some of the tools or similar tools that I'm showing in this talk, you might be already familiar with those. Now, let me tell you the story on how I get, got started with GitOps. I was starting off with my career in the open source blockchain space, um, deploying demo applications to distributed ledgers. Then at some point in 2020, I believe, I joined a company called Codefresh that you might have heard of at this conference, yay, <laughs> um, as their developer advocate. And that was the first time really that I heard about Kubernetes, containerization, and GitOps. And you have to think about it this way. Lots of people who are entering the tech space right now who are working at companies that use cloud native technologies, uh, such as maybe at yours, they are not familiar with different ways of deploying software. They are maybe only then familiar with the GitOps way of deploying their tools, their applications. So I really thought GitOps must be the norm. Everybody must be doing it, right? Uh, which is still probably not really the case. And that's why we're here at ArgoCon to talk more about GitOps and uh, share different ways of using GitOps. Now, at the beginning of last year, 2022, um, I got started at Acro Security as their developer advocate. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, I'm not a security professional. Uh, I just want to share different ways on how you can use different tools across the cloud native space to enhance your security if you're also not a security professional. And one of those tools is GitOps. So usually when we talk about so in this talk, the main premise is basically that when we apply GitOps best practices, we can increase scan coverage. Scan coverage refers to you being able to scan different components of your application for security issues. The more that you can scan off your application, the higher the scan coverage. So that's a good thing. However, if you're not defining your resources in code, you likely can't, uh, you can't scan them, you can't identify security issues with those deployment resources. So usually when we talk about so our software supply chain, the different components that go into our application stack that we're using, um, Git is one of those tools as part of our entire software supply chain. Now, if you're using GitOps, our goal is really to apply GitOps best practices across our entire tooling and really ideally identify all of the libraries, the different packages, the different tools, everything that we're using, everything that we're defining in one way or another to ultimately commit to Git to keep it version control to make it observable. Because ultimately, what we cannot see, we cannot scan. And that's something that GitOps really helps us with. It forces us and pushes us towards making our tooling, our application more observable and trackable so we can scan those resources. Now ultimately, GitOps information are also security information, which is another benefit. When I got started with GitOps at Codefresh, I was told that it can help us answering these questions. Who can deploy what, or did deploy what, where was it deployed, how was it deployed, and when was it deployed? Tools such as Argo CD show you everything that happened during those processes. So in case something goes wrong, in case uh, an upgrade to your application goes wrong, you can use Argo CD to answer what actually happened and then be able to be in a position to easier fix those issues. Now the same, and the same questions we can use if we identify a new critical vulnerability, a new critical security issue in our production environment. How did it end up in our production environment? Why wasn't it caught beforehand? Now we can look at Argo CD, we can look at our deployment history and see what has happened that we didn't catch the security issue before in our build pipeline. So Argo CD has several benefits. It helps us to adopt GitOps best practices it helps us to define our resources more declaratively, meaning through code we define what should be deployed, how should it be deployed, where should it be deployed. Um, and it also helps us to adopt Kubernetes best practices. So for example, if your application is larger, you might want to use a tool such as Helm charts to template that application. Now with Argo CD, with Argo CD CRDs, custom resource definitions in Kubernetes, you can easily define uh, how, for example, Helm charts should be deployed. 
Now let's look more at security scanners. What are security scanners? How do they work? I've mentioned security scanning a few times already. Ultimately, security scanners take different information from, for example, vulnerability database on the different vulnerabilities that are found in different libraries. They take information from frameworks and best practices. I'm thinking here, for example, about NSA benchmarks or CIF um, compliance scans. Now these benchmarks, compliance scans, these uh, definitions tell you, um, be based on best practices, uh, how your application should be running. How should it be configured um, to be optimized in the security uh, focused mindset. It also takes in a list of, for example, misconfigurations. So whenever you're using, for example, a Docker file, a Kubernetes YAML manifest, Helm charts, Terraform, CloudFormation, you're ultimately setting up configurations for your application. Now it's really easy to introduce misconfigurations. A security scanner will likely have, if they scan for misconfiguration, have a list of common misconfiguration um, that goes into the security scan. Then you've provided the resource that you want to scan. The security scanner compares the information that it has on security issues with what you actually set up, and then it produces a scan report. Now that's in its high level, really, highest level, how a security scanner would operate. Now let me tell you a bit about Trivi. Trivi is our open source security scanner, all in one cloud native security scanner um, by Acre Security. Now usually when I give demos, I only showcase open source tools. Um, in my de demo later, I'm gonna show also Codefresh a little bit. Um, <laughs> so Trivi is basically um, a security scanner that you can use to scan for vulnerabilities, for misconfigurations. You can scan exposed secrets in your environment or in your configuration files. Um, these are just some of the scanner that it has, and you can scan different scan targets. Scan targets refer to any, for example, configuration resource. It also has some other features, but this is really not a Trivi talk. This is just to highlight that Trivi is one of the open source scanners out there. Another one, if you want to use uh, one that's within the CNCF, is Cubescape. Cubescape is a sandbox project. Um, it does misconfiguration scanning as well as compliance scanning. So you could also use Cubescape uh, for your security scanning. Now ideally, you want to identify security issues as early as possible when you get started configuring your different resources. So for example, when you get started containerizing your application, you want to ultimately then already start scanning it, the container image, the base image that you're using, as well as your Docker file for security issues. The earlier you catch security issues, the easier is it to fix them long term. Now, if you get started scanning your resources when they are just about to go to your production pipeline, um, then it's much more difficult to fix them, to identify them, um, and, and do something about it. And that's something that GitOps Argo City also helps us with. If you're using GitOps in your production environment, you likely are not just starting to define your resources in Git right before you deploy them. You likely already built that kind of mentality, the mindset and the processes to define your resources declaratively as early as possible. Now, if you don't identify resources before they hit your production environments. Um, both Kubescape and also Trivi have Kubernetes operators that live inside of your cluster and that scan your resources uh, as they are deployed or changed within your cluster. So for example, the Trivi operator does continuous scanning from within your cluster and then produces scan reports uh, based on what it can find. So you can still like, identify issues as they are running within your in different environments. Now let's look a bit closer at Argo CD uh, for additional security scanning. How can it actually help us to introduce more security scanning, um, not just the kind of the mindset around GitOps? So as we built our YAML manifest, for example, here's a basic uh, Kubernetes deployment YAML manifest. Um, we can then go ahead and scan that for any security issues. Now, ideally, before you build your YAML manifest, your different deployment manifests, you will already want to get started with deployments, uh, with security scanning um, across your different resources. So this is really just an example of like once you de define the resource that should ultimately be deployed, uh, you scan it for security issues. Here's an example of how you would scan it with Trivi. So you can use the Trivi uh, config command and then scan the deployment YAML manifest for security issues. The screenshot shows uh, a security scan of the deployment YAML manifest that just displays uh, security issues that are of medium severity. You can filter by different severity, you can filter by different information of the security scan. 
So you run that security, you run that scan with Trivi, you can fix maybe any uh, misconfiguration issues that you identify. And then once you're ready, once you're at the point that you actually want to um, define, use Argo CD and deploy that YAML manifest, you can create your Argo CD resource. What do I, def what do I define as an Argo CD resource? So in this case, specifically, um, I'm specifying the CRD, the application CRD for Argo CD. And the application CRD basically states what should be deployed. So in this case, I'm providing the GitHub repository. This should be deployed, the manifest that I have in that GitHub repository. Uh, how should they be, be deployed and where should they be deployed? So with Argo CD, I cannot only define what should be deployed, the YAML manifest, but also how they should be deployed and updated over time. And then I can also go ahead and actually verify that Argo CD manifest that I just showed you. So I'm gonna show you an example. I don't, hope you can see it. I'm gonna describe what you can, what you can see here if you can't see the, uh, yeah, the dark background. Um, so here I have the ap application, a similar application, YAML manifest um, for Argo CD. It's a custom resource and First, when I was using Trivi and I wanted to scan uh, custom resources with Trivi, I was like, wait, Trivi only has like the standard, mis only has the standard misconfiguration scans um, for your standard YAML manifest, such as deployments or services or other common Kubernetes resources. How can I then um, make, ensure that this application CRD is actually set up correctly? So you can do that by specifying JSON schema. This JSON schema ultimately states what are the different properties that this YAML manifest should contain. So I can specify here which are the different fields that should be part of this application file. So if somebody sets up, for example, a new application uh, CRD for Argo CD, um, I can then check that it's set up correctly. So I cannot only ensure that the manifest, the deployment manifest of the actual application uh, is set up correctly and doesn't have introduced any misconfiguration issues in my environments, but I can also then specify how the CRD uh, should look like through JSON schemas. And then I can specify some regular policy here on what are the fields that should be displayed, that should be part of this application YAML manifest. So I'm saying, stating here that the kind of the CRD should be application. Any other kind will not be accepted. That's just a basic demo example of how you could then cross-check uh, with Rego um, that your application YAML manifest is actually defined correctly. So I'm passing this in with the trivi command. So I'm saying trivi config again then I only want to see high and critical issues, security issues. Now in this case, I define if it's not defined as an application, then that's a high severity issue, so it should be displayed. Uh, I'm passing in the policies that I have in the JSON schema with the policy flag into Trivi. And then I'm also just specifying the resource that I want to scan, in this case, my application deployment for Argo CD. So I'm gonna go ahead and I run the Trivi scan it detected one configuration file. As you can see, there are no security issues, <laughs> no misconfiguration issues identified because it's specified as an application. If I run this uh, specified as a different kind that doesn't really exist, that I shouldn't be using, and I run the scan with Trivi again, then it will notify me, hey, there's something wrong in your configuration. It shouldn't be defined this way. It should be of type application. So this is ultimately how I would not only specify uh, what I want to deploy, but also how I want to deploy it. And I can verify that the way I'm deploying it is how I set it up within the policies within my organization. And then I can go ahead and I can deploy the, the configuration um, through Ar or the, the manifest through Argo CD in my build pipeline. And also in my build pipeline, I can then make sure that uh, if there's any change to the YAML manifest, if there are any updates, then the resource is scanned again. So in this case, I'm gonna just increase it. I have here uh, the dashboard of Codefresh. I'm just using Codefresh because it's easy to switch between pipelines and, and my GitOps dashboard. It's a similar UI how you would find it with Argo CD. So this is basically specifying here my deployment that I just showed you, as well as the service. So I have here my website deployment. And I have here, in addition to the website deployment, I have from the Trivi operator the different security scans that I could also look at right here uh, through the UI. Now, this is configured also declaratively of any, if, if, if there are any changes to my main branch or to the, to the main branch uh, where my deployment YAML manifest lives, 
uh, then Argo CD should make an autosync update to the resources, to the actual state within my cluster. Now, before that, however, I want to make sure that if there are any issues within the deployment, I can actually have a chance to, chance to fix them um, and before deploying them to the main branch and before Argo CD does the update. So it's best practice that Argo CD does autosyncs with a specific branch. Um, but actually, if I start, a, for example, a commit where I make changes to the YAML manifest, I want to ensure that Trivi, for example, in my build pipeline, um, is able to scan my resources, uh, again, for security issues. So in this case, my deployment resources for security issues, and I can then uh, change the configuration should there be any misconfiguration issues. So in this case, there's one medium uh, misconfiguration. So I could look at the build pipeline and see, oh, there's a misconfiguration. I can either choose to ignore it as it might not be impacting my application and give it the approval to merge it into the main branch and then Argo CD will do the autosync update. Or I can say, hey, stop, I want to actually make changes to that commit um, so this misconfiguration is not getting deployed to Argo CD. So this is ultimately the two areas that Argo CD and GitOps will additionally help you uh, to identify misconfiguration issues will help you to identify um, uh, enforce best practices of your deployments. Now just to summarize the different benefits, uh, with GitOps, with Argo CD, you can increase the scan coverage of your application. So you can ensure that you define all of your resources declaratively right from the start and be able to scan them right from the start as they are getting developed versus um, as they are getting deployed. It increases your security posture, so you're able to identify when things go wrong, not only um, from a reliability standpoint, but also from a security stand standpoint of why they went wrong. And it helps you to, incre to increase the control that you have over your resources through better version control. And it provides you with, or resources, security scanners such as Trivi provide you with trackable and shareable insights on your different uh, security issues. Now, I think I have five minutes for questions. Otherwise, you can find me on Twitter, here at Ulis Anaif, and here's some of the resources that I've been using. Also, Aqua is at Kubedon, so find us if you want to talk about Trivi and our other open source tools at the Aqua booth. Hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, I was wondering when I saw the schema in JSON um, for the validation, couldn't you just use like the actual CRD definitions which are written in YAML that you deployed to Kubernetes? Because they're already finished. I was just asking myself like, where does the JSON schema come from in the end? Uh, I wrote this. That's uh, where it's coming from. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't but want to redefine uh, like yeah, existing yeah. YAML definitions. I guess you could, to be honest, like to be completely transparent, I'm just getting started with Rego and JSON schemas, so this was kind of the way that I chose to uh, verify it. Um, so I guess you could. I have <laughs> to defer that question probably, <laughs> since I haven't tried it. <laughs> Other questions? Oh, over here. Over there. Run. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the great talk. Uh, my question is, how does it work with reporting, uh, monitoring several uh, applications, and you know, like all the enterprise features you want to have usually, when you have a huge enterprise landscape and you want to implement security for, you know, thousand applications or so, microservices. Then you should probably go, <laughs> if you don't want to configure things by yourself, uh, you should probably go with an enterprise product that provides you all the automation such as Aqua Security. Um, I just had a conversation right before this talk of somebody saying, hey, we can generate reports through Trivi, we can output them as like, uh, like in different 
file formats and then we can store them somewhere and we can aggregate them and so on, but it's very, it's, it's manual thing to do with the Trivi CLI um, in you from, if you have like, let's say, hundreds of build pipelines, right? How do you do it? Well, in that case, Trivi probably doesn't scale to your needs and you should go with an enterprise project. However, there's a lot of things that you can do with Trivi and integrating it with other cloud native tools. For example, the Trivi operator generates, you can set it to, gener to write the metrics. It's generating all your different vulnerability reports and different other security reports, and then you can aggregate, aggregate them, for example, in your Grafana dashboard or in your different monitoring tools, since it's just, it's, it's Kubernetes native, and as such, it's all CRDs, and anything that can really work with CRDs will then be able also to work with the trivia operator. Um, I'm giving tomorrow an in-booth presentation on exactly that as well, if you check it out. Um, thank you for the nice presentation. Um, so my question is, is Trivi planning to um, include also some common CRDs, like for example an Argo CD application? Some what? Some common C co custom resource definitions like a uh, Argo CD application, is that planned to be included in Trivi as well? So let me go back to the other slide. Here. Ah. Here, so all of these, the vulnerability report, config audit report, and so on, all of these are based on custom resource definitions mm -hmm. that are defined within the operator. So they basically deploy to the cluster, and then they define how to scan, for example, vulnerability scan should mm -hmm. be report on, should be done within your, of your container images, for example. And what happens then, that these uh, scans are attached to that resource that it got scanned. So for example, I have the operator running in this cluster alongside my application, and then it will scan the application, for example, the replica set for different security issues. For example, here I have the misconfiguration scan that's within the cluster of like the deployed resource of the cluster. And it specifies here, this is a CRD, config auto report from the operator, and it specifies everything that's misconfigured within that um, resource. Does that answer the question? Um, no, uh, it no. was a bit different. So you showed us how you uh, set up the JSON schema for an Argo CD application ah, yes. itself, ah, right? If that's also done for a Trivi. Yes, that's ah, what that's, I mean. Yes. Uh, right now we don't have that like out of the box provided. Um, yeah, I have to follow up on that. Good okay. question. That would be nice yeah. to have, yes, thank you. Other questions? Also, Oded, please report to the AV booth, Oded. Other yeah. questions? No. Okay, well, thank you, Anais. Thank you.